Welcome to part 2 in the series where I go through all maps available for multiplayer and cannon brawl and show one build for each map and what to think about. I did Western Coast last, so now I'm going to do number 3. There is no number 1, strangely enough. I guess random counts as number 1. So, number 2. And you would think number 3 would be here, but that's number 5. There's some kind of road here you have to follow. No, hard control. Road here you have to follow. And here is number three with the southern coast. This map, there is a special build, which was invented, I think, by Wissact, which I, well, copied from him. I would like to say stole, but that's not really nice, so I say copied. Hmm. Copying is the greatest form of stealing, or something like that. Well, for this strategy, you need to select a vehicle pilot. Because this is called a freeze flame strategy. So, and as always, I do normal balloons and normal mines. And anyone who say, well, Accelerate is so good. They are not. They cost five extra, they slow you down. And in this game, gaining ground is important. There are strategies or maps where you don't need ground or where, on maps where you don't need that many balloons to take it. So you could use Accelerate Shop platforms. And there are strategies for everything, but if you are a new player, don't use normal balloons, use normal mines. Well, but fortified mines has more health. Yeah, but they cost more. And if your opponent is constantly attacking your mines and nothing else, you're doing something wrong. Possibly with exception for maps like the valley, where you will lose mines. But you won't. there's lots of mines and you lose speed. And speed is often very important. If you slow down from the start, well, you have a disadvantage. Well, freeze flame. Well, you will have frost towers, naturally. I hear that on the nine freeze. And you will have repair. And I said that shields is good, but on this map, you can look how the map looks. We are the blue castle, the enemy are the red castle. And as you can see, I played this against the AI. That's the last one. So, you have uh, a top open, a big slab of dirt with the top path open, and you have a bottom path that's blocked. Buildings on the bottom, like trying to do lasers in the bottom near the center is worthless. They'll take ages to go through, and the enemy can just keep building on the top slab and take it all, and have really close to your HQ. So that's no good. But it's a lot of space for repairs, or banks, if you want to do a bank strategy. But, but you can do repairs, and these repairs can heal things up. And the advantage with repair over shields is that the repair, well, the enemies won't attack it because it's out of the way. And you can repair many different buildings. And it isn't just two layers. Repair over time is a lot better than the shield. Because they can repair more and they can keep buildings alive. And you can put it exactly where you need it. This building's damage, heal that. The shield is stationary, it's one place. But repair, well, they won't help against drills. And they won't help against lasers as much. They won't block lasers, and they won't really drill cis like fall damage, so they won't really heal that that much. So unless you have minion, they reduce fall damage. So, but I'm digressing. For this strategy, you use repair, and for this map, repair is good. And the only three flame, so you need flamethrower. Now, on this map, it's important to think that you have to push ground. You see the middle diamond? Well, I told you that diamonds are important. Go for the diamond. On this map, the diamond is too hard to defend. And it is only 1.5 times a gold mine. So, building buildings and attacking your opponent's building is a lot more valuable. Because the opponent will easily kill your diamond mine, and he, if you attack the open the diamond mine, well, he attack your tower. He'll have one shot above you, so he'll destroy the tower before you can destroy his, and so forth. He will gain ground. Eventually being able to destroy the diamond and take it for himself, while well, he has the ground advantage. You pretty much lose at that point. So on this map, going for the diamond, nah, there are strategies where it could work, probably, and so on, but on the top level games I play, in the top level games I play, we don't usually go for the diamond. So, the AI is killed. As always, you can take this gold immediately, take it immediately. Don't lose balloons if you build a mine. So important. Keep building mines. Balloons when necessary, but as soon as you can do a mine, do a mine in, in the early game. It's complicated when you get back into the game. Like this. Now, the first step in this strategy is doing a 
Freeze power. Frost power. Yeah. Freeze in a day. That's far too right to just top thing as possible. Normally, the enemy will have a tower right there. You fire at the enemy tower. Now that's not really necessary, but the AA is stupid. He'll block that one for shot. Kill him anyway. And so on. Kill a mine, I have nothing else to. And normally, it'll be buildings here. Make it you fire on the enemy. And fire further back. The uncle is good because the freeze plane strategy will keep get them to very low health. Which you can you can finish off the building with the uncle. I pulled up thing. Look, it barely does anything. It's not really worth anything to do with that. I pulled this in front. This can actually kill a lot of buildings here. Well, the AI can't play this map. So, so I play the map. I can play bad, but I'm just pretending that it's here. I'm doing something. And look, the lazy can open the diamond for me. Nice. Look at the incredible range this is on level 2. You can actually fight. That would be really interesting. As a general gist of the strategy. Nah, it's really no point in keeping playing against the AI. But the strategy works the way you build freeze, so you keep freezing the opponent's towers. The freeze isn't that long, they don't have to freeze but up the damage, but you do a bit more damage. And then you build. Normally, the opponent will hold the ground, so you can't build a flamethrower in the front. So you'll have to either build it when you kill one of their towers, so you gain ground, or when they kill your most forward freeze tower. Build a flame. The flame is really effective. Shields are not effective at block, dirt doesn't block, so on. So you actually, and you, their buildings will be packed. You look here. Here, so not really packed space. A flame will fire. This map is generally hard to describe against the AI because the AI can't play it. Naturally, now I'll just build a lot of freeze, hit his HQ, and eventually win. But it feels a bit um, unnecessary to do so. So the strategy is to keep firing freeze towers on your enemy's buildings, freeze them as much as possible, try not to hit two freeze too close to each other so the freeze is as effective as possible. But don't wait too long because you do need the damage as well. You need to be effective that way. And then build flame. And look. In this case, I could. This is. Yeah, well, it's a big opening. But normally I'd had hits with high flame throwers and hit hard and stuff. doesn't really play it normally on this map, so it's hard to show it, but I hope you understood at least something. Well, I'll see you in the next video.